Welcome, Welcome to, to Bethel. Bethel. Welcome to 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 Bethel Baptist Church. Welcome to Bethel. Well, welcome back to another Pilgrim's Progress. We left Christian, didn't we, in this beautiful palace with prudence, piety and charity and the porter. And they all just were talking about the Lord of the Hill till late into the night. And they were having this huge feast and all they were talking about was the Lord of the Hill, how he died for sinners risen again how he welcomed people and they had such a feast they were stuffed so full christian was so tired well it's no surprise he had the best night's sleep of his life and even his bedroom was called peace and he woke up in the morning ready to go and there were the three ladies waiting and they said we 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 got to show you some amazing things incredible things it's going to take days please don't leave until you've seen all of this christian was so excited he agreed and so first of all they took him to this big big room the study and in the study they opened this huge book very old book but as they read christian saw it was full of amazing things about the lord of the hill of difficulty and charity pointed out how amazing the lord of the hill is she said look at this look at this he is the son of the ancient of days how amazing is that he doesn't have a beginning he doesn't have an end he lasts forever then look at this look at this all the things he's done how he's helped hundreds and hundreds of pilgrims like you follow him Look at all the amazing things he's done. He's died, he's risen again, he's beaten death, he's beaten, fought huge dragons and enemies, and he's won. Isn't that amazing? And look at this, look at this, look at this. He runs a kingdom that will never end. He's king forever. Isn't he amazing? And you could see Charity. She loved the Lord of the Hill so much. Christian let it sink in how amazing he was next they charity showed him some heroic things that the servants of the lord of the hill had done they'd stopped the mouths of lions been through the fire they fought huge enemies they looked a little bit like the lord of the hill and by trusting in him they'd done all sorts of heroic things a story after story charity points out look at this one he was weak but the Lord of the Hill helped him. Look at her. She she didn't know what to do. And the Lord of the Hill came and fought for her. Oh, it was amazing. And then Charity pointed out how excited and willing the Lord of the Hill was to take anyone into his service. She pointed out from the book again. Look, look, look. Look, here's a wicked man. He was so selfish, so wicked, so evil. And yet he turned to the Lord of the Hill. And the Lord of the Hill, he welcomed him. He said, you're welcome to follow me. And he helped him and he loved him. And Christian heard all sorts of stories about horrible people, sinful people, that the Lord of the Hill had totally changed and helped to follow him. And he asked, could he stay in the study? Charity said, of course, learn everything you can. Tomorrow we've got an exciting day in the armory. But yes, yeah, stay in the study. And Christian then looked up and saw how amazing this room was. The book that they'd been reading from was the most important thing. But there was books and books filled with stories of other pilgrims. On the ceiling and the walls were pictures of all the ways the Lord of the Hill had helped them over thousands of years. There were stories of good times where thousands of people turned to the Lord of the Hill. 
There were stories of horrible times when everyone forgot the Lord of the Hill and everything went wrong and fell apart. There were stories of false pilgrims getting into the palace and attacks on the palace and how the Lord of the Hill had fought and won great battles. And then there was things about the future that hadn't happened yet. Christian read about those and they were so exciting how the Lord of the Hill was going to win forever and he just soaked it all in it was incredible but the day had to end and the next day came and was just as exciting the ladies led Christian into this huge chamber this huge hall and there was rows and rows and rows of armor and weapons all sorts of sizes. In fact, it would perfectly fit anyone of any age, children, adults, older people. And as he looked, he asked, how much is here? And he was told, there's as many pieces as the stars in the sky. In other words, for everyone who would ever trust in the Lord of the Hill, there was just the right set of armor and weapons for them. Christian was trying to take it all in. It was stunning that the Lord of the Hill would provide everything for them to fight. They just had to put it on. And Charity led him to this rod, this big long stick. Christian was like, is this a weapon? And then he looked around and there were other strange things that didn't seem very powerful. He was like, what are all these? Charity was like, these are weapons that some of the Lord of the Hill servants have used to do amazing things. That that you're holding in your hand is Moses' rod. When he held that out over the Red Sea, the water split apart and there was a path for thousands to cross safely. She showed all the other amazing things. The hammer and tent peg that Jael used to smash through Caesar's skull. The jars, the trumpets and torches that Gideon used to surround the camp of the Midianites and they attacked each other and ran away. They were defeated. The bone, ox bone, that Shamgar used to slay 600 men. The jawbone that Samson used to kill the Philistines, thousands of them in one day. The sling that David used and the little pebbles that he used to bring down that giant Goliath. And then Christian was led to one more place. There was one more that was going to be used one final time, and that was a huge sword. And he was like, what is that? That's the sword of the Lord that he's going to come back and use to destroy all his enemies. And Charity took him to his armour, the armour that was designed for him. She's like, put this on, put this on, then you'll be ready to fight whatever enemy you come up against. And Christian found that it's the perfect fit. I love that. It all clicked and snapped and went straight into place. He felt amazing. Look at him. Shining armour. He felt so well protected and ready. His feet felt quick and fast. The shield would stop any arrows, the breastplate, it was solid. It was the best armour. It, it was armour that had been proven strong before by someone else that he was wearing and he was going to surely meet a big enemy after this. We'll find out in the weeks to come. And that was the end of the second day. On the third day, oh, look at that. They said, just stay one more day because there's something else you've got to take in. Soak it in. And they led him up to the rooftop of the palace, the beautiful palace. And he saw the most beautiful view he'd ever seen. When he asked what they were, Charity said, this is the delectable mountains that you can see in the distance. And he saw these lush mountains forests and woods with loads of trees and shade. He could hear the birds singing. There was vineyards with loads of grapes growing, fruit trees, flowers, meadows, springs of water, fountains gushing out everywhere. It was like this land that was full of life. 
And when he said, what, what's that land called round about those delectable mountains? And they told him, that is Emmanuel's land. And it's on the outskirts of the celestial city. When you get there, you'll be able to see the gates of the celestial city. And Christian just stood there, staring at the beautiful view. And his heart was pounding for the celestial city and the Lord of the hill. He knew there was going to be loads of danger on the way, but he just stopped on the top of the rooftop and soaked in the warmth of the sun and the beauty of the view. All that pain, all that suffering was going to be worth it. And it was only from the top of that palace that he could see it properly. What happens next time? You're going to have to tune in to find out. Well, we're going to go back over today's story and learn what Jesus wants us to learn. There's some amazing things. So remember, the beautiful palace is church. It's all the people that belong to Jesus. And your local church, a church that hopefully you belong to. If not, you should you should follow Jesus, be baptised, become a member, join his family. It's an amazing place. And it's only when you really belong in Jesus' family in the church that you get to feast. That's what Christian had. He took communion last week. And when he started to take in everything about Jesus, he slept in peace. He had such peace. And he was so refreshed by all the help that Jesus gave him. In the study, the book that they open is, of course, you guessed it, it's the Bible. And it's full of Jesus on every page the most incredible book written by the Holy Spirit for us for you and it's full of Jesus and remember charity tells Christian he's the son of the ancient of days he's always been around he understands you he loves you he cares for you he's always been there he doesn't have a beginning doesn't have an end he's always there when you need him and he's he's done incredible things and in the bible there's stories of christians not stories but you know it's true written down things about their lives and how jesus has helped them thousands and thousands and there's also every area of life is covered in the bible every problem you could have all those sorts of things and Jesus talks about them and shows how he's helped in real people's lives and how he wants to help you and how that Jesus he runs this kingdom that never ends the kingdom of heaven and he wants you to be part of it what an amazing thing that Jesus will never die again he's risen from the dead and the Bible's full of all sorts of ways that Jesus has worked through other Christians these heroic things Um, You can find in Hebrews chapter 11, by simply trusting in Jesus, by faith is the line you'll find there in Hebrews 11, by faith, by trusting in Jesus. Abraham had had the, the strength to live in a tent, to not accept money from this world, but to live for heaven. And it's, it's amazing how he followed Jesus, just trusted him. And that's just one, you can read that chapter yourself. And, and you'll find in the Bible how amazing Jesus is, that he's, he's totally up for saving bad, selfish, wicked people. And if you know and you're listening today that you're a sinner, the Pharisees said about Jesus, he welcomes sinners and eats with them. They accused him of that, that was a bad thing. But that's to Jesus' glory. He will welcome you if you trust in him, if you're sorry for your sin. If you, he's died for your sin, risen again. And if you trust him, if you believe him, you can be forgiven and welcomed in. Read the Bible. Incredible book. It's got times, remember Christian then looked at the the walls, isn't it? The book, the Bible is full of times of revival when Jesus saved thousands, when they all turned to him. And then sad times when they all turned away. And that's warnings to us. To constantly be seeking Jesus and loving him. False Christians. How to check whether you really know Jesus or not. Otherwise you are in danger yourself. And then attacks on the church are all in the Bible. And how Jesus has defended such an incredible book. It's like this unlimited 
book and every time you open it, it comes to life and Jesus shows you more about him and how he's helped so many people. It just, it would take forever to get through it. There's so many levels, so much in there. And there's also things Christian read about the future. That's obviously the prophecies about Jesus coming back again and making a new heavens and a new earth for you to live with him forever. Will there be no more dying, no more pain, no more suffering. Everything's going to be amazing. And it's in church that you really get to understand the Bible. As you read the Bible together with the other adults and with the other children and you share about Jesus together, you get this amazing picture like this building up and you you read all the other Christians. They're like living books of Jesus' help and grace that you can have too. What an amazing place church is where the Bible is taught, where Jesus is taught and read and enjoyed and there's life. Pick up your Bible, read it, ask Jesus to show you himself and that you can meet with him on every single page. Well, the armory is about a very famous verse in the Bible talking about the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit. And the armor uh, there is, is for any Christian. We are in a battle, the Bible tells us, and it's not, it's these, this battle is not against other people, but it's against the devil, against the powers of darkness. So it's not against other people, but it's against something we can't necessarily see. So we need special armour, and Jesus has given us that armour. It's his armour, and look, there's enough for you. You might think, oh, I've read about these other Christians who've fought hard and well and they've won. But what about me? I feel very small. I feel very weak. I've got massive enemies ahead on my journey. Well, Jesus says he's got just the thing for you. And we're going to come on to that in a minute. If you're doubting, look at that. Just a piece of wood, Moses' rod. But Jesus used his power in the church to rescue them from Egypt using that piece of wood that stick so it doesn't Jesus can use anything use that stick to take millions of people across the Red Sea a hammer and a nail but Jesus used it to rescue his church Gideon it's just a trumpet just just a, a normal lamp and a clay jar very weak, can be smashed easy, and yet there was light burning inside, and Jesus used that to conquer the church's enemies and to set them free. And the, the bones, you think, well, what good do they do? They're all bones on the floor, and yet with Jesus' power, the power of the Holy Spirit, they can smash any enemy. And Goliath thought it was an absolute joke, didn't he? He was mocking Dave, mocking Jesus and mocking the church like you're so weak, you're so powerless, what can you possibly do? Who would have thought a little piece of leather and a pebble would have taken him out? But David knew he came against that giant in the power of Jesus. And Jesus took him out, destroyed him, just like he's destroyed the devil forever. So be encouraged. It's not about like the value of the weapon. None of these were made of gold, polished, sharp, and were they is the fact that Jesus chose to use ordinary people in his church to show off his strength and power. Weak things of the world to shame the wise, and Jesus can do it again through you. Let him pick you up in his hands and use you. It doesn't matter what you look like, look at those. It doesn't matter if you're pretty or ugly. It doesn't matter if you're tall or short or <coughs> strong or weak. Jesus can use you. And the armour that Christian got to is the armour from Ephesians 6. And he had to put it on. It is Jesus' armour. That's why it's been proved, if we're going to come on to that in the questions later, this is like putting Jesus on every day. We need to put on his righteousness. We need to put on his goodness and that protects us. We need to trust him, the shield of faith. We need to use the faith that Jesus trusts the Father with to put out all the arrows that the devil fires at us every day. The sword is the sword of the Spirit, the Bible. We need to use that to attack what the devil's lies. 
We need to pick it up and use it. And that's so, so important every day. We need to put on this armour and fight this battle, not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers, the dark powers and the devil himself. And of course, the last piece was the sword of the Lord. And in 2 Thessalonians, that just simply says it's the breath of Jesus' mouth. How amazing is he that all the devil and his demons and the powers that we're up against, when the time comes, Jesus is just going to go, blow on them. And that is how easy it is for him to smash their power and defeat them. So be encouraged. Pick up. Jesus, trust him, put him on every day, put on all the equipment he gives and you'll have the strength from him to fight any enemy using all the help that he gives you and it will fit, it's polished, it's been used, Jesus has used it himself to defeat death on the cross and sin, you'll be fully equipped, ready for everything in life. And then the last one is this view. So in church, we get to study the Bible together and we, we find out how amazing Jesus is. It's only in church, which is like this beautiful palace that can happen. And it's in church that we get equipped, we get made ready for every battle we go out to fight in work and family and church life in the week. It's only in church that we get properly equipped. And this, what about this one? This amazing scenery that Christian saw, the mountains, the beautiful land that he could see in the distance is like the time just before he would die. It's like heaven is really close, but he gets to glimpse it. He sees a little bit of it and soak it in. So it's like he sees a bit of heaven now. And it's only in church, when you climb up to the heights of the palace, when you climb up to the heights of church, what you get to see if church goes right and well with Jesus' help is you get a taste of heaven on earth now. There's nowhere else in the world you can go to get that. You get to see some of the things that are coming when Jesus comes again. You get to taste them now a little bit. They're going to be so much better then. And it should make our hearts ache. Like Paul said, I long to depart and be with the Lord Jesus because it's better by far. But we get these glimpses of heaven now and Jesus is so kind to give them to us in church. When you see other Christians loving each other with Jesus' love, being patient with each other, suffering with each other. You get these amazing tastes and views of what heaven is like. And it makes you long for that day when Jesus comes back again. Trust in Jesus, pick up your Bible, get back to church when you can and join in and see amazing things about Jesus. Well, here's some other things you can do. 2 Timothy 3, John 5, what's the book that Jesus has given to the church? What is it good for? And who is the Bible about? Keep it simple. Ephesians 6, Isaiah 59, what are the pieces of armour that Jesus gives the church to use? Perhaps chat about those which what each one is good for and whose armor is it that we must put on remember that it's really important isaiah 33 and lamentations what can we see from church life and what can cloud this view so when can we see heaven in church life but what blocks out that view okay and make sure you deal with that then you can add these three parts to the palace beautiful the study the armory and the balcony or the rooftop to your map and then this would probably take you ages, but it's a good thing to do. Keep doing it your whole life. What amazing things happen in church in the Bible. Think of the times in church when God's people are gathered and where Jesus helps them to fight enemies, where Jesus reminds them who he is, where he gives them a taste of heaven on earth, when there's times of revival. All these different, there's ton, hun, thousands of them in the Bible. Have a look and find out. See you next time.